There we go. There we go. Why am I suddenly getting weird? Okay, sorry. I had to move. Okay, save this, go back to here, YouTube. <clears throat> sorry about this guys. I, I had to I had to reboot um the thing and it just wasn't working. Ah, okay, you're some there. We uh, ah, okay. You can hear me. Oh, that's good. Sorry. Sorry about that. I it, it did it yesterday too, but yesterday so I hit I changed my because I've got two Wi-Fi things here, and I, one's 2G and one's 5G, and I don't know what that means. I don't think it's 2G and 5G, but it's just that's what it's called. And uh, and so I switched to 2G from 2G to 5G because I always think it's better, and um, it still wouldn't log me in. So then I hit refresh, and yesterday when I hit refresh, it just like kept everything open and going. But this time when I hit refresh, I had to create a new stream. So I'm gonna give give me a minute, and we'll get you guys going. Okay. Um, no, it may. I'm going to turn that up again. Hello. I'm still not seeing any. Normally, I would see something down here light up like one bar. Uh, let me know if that's better. I hate to have all this. Oh, 2G is the connection I should use, really? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, what am I on now? I'm on the 5G one, the Spectrum. I. Uh, if I switch over to 2G now, that might it'll shut us off for a second. It shouldn't close the window, but I'll leave it like this. Um, but is that better? Can you can you hear me okay, Kathy? Is there is it is it loud enough? I, like I said, normally I have these little little bars down there. I'm going to do some tests. I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on there. I hate to waste the first two minutes of the video. People watching. Oh, got to turn on my light too. Well, now you know I'm wearing pants. That's the first game. Of course, you probably could tell before that. So um, it might just be you. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, I got you turned up one click more than normal. Um, I'm, I've got a, uh, I've got a uh, Neve. Uh, we're actually running this mic through a Neve channel. So <laughs> uh, you've got some. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I, that's good to know, Kimberly. Thank you. The um, My router, my Wi-Fi is just on the other side of that wall, so it's not too far away. I've never really had problems. I, I'm usually here uploading more than I – I am not. I don't generally watch Netflix or anything here, so I'm not really – I don't ever notice the, the buffering or any of that kind of stuff, so <laughs> – Hey, super coach, you like my T-shirt? My, I have my, uh, our second son goes to USC. He's getting his master's at USC in engineering. So this is an electric sitar, but made by Jerry Jones. They don't make them anymore. I don't even know if Jerry Jones is around anymore. Um, and basically, it was kind of invented. Um, it's not a sitar. It's an electric sitar, kind of a totally different instrument. Um, but it's supposed to sound like a sitar, but it really doesn't. Uh, but it was used so much in the 60s that it's become very iconic. You know, the... <laughs> You know, those, you know, stuff like that. You've heard a lot of, you know, a war, I think, used it on a song. And basically what it was was an L.A. session guitar player back in the 60s, member of the Wrecking Crew, actually came up with this bridge where the strings are laying across it and um, they're, they're buzzing. And it causes a... And if I want to do like uh, one of our... Uh, I could do our... If I did that, that E Phrygian... A lot of times it's what you play on an instrument that makes it sound a little more, little more legit. If I were to strum out basic chords, it's not going to sound as legit if I, as if I... If I play some, so 
some like harmonic minor scale over over the uh, on the on the guitar, then it's going to sound more more legit. Um, and then what this, this these are these are the Swarmandal strings. I don't have them really tuned right now. Um, and you need to. Uh, it comes with a wrench, but you need to use like like you're tuning a um, uh, auto harp. It's the same kind of tuning, so it's very very difficult to tune this because very little movement will move it up a half step. So you have to be really careful. I don't really use that. I have, but I mean, it's so you would tune it to some scale, uh, and that way it would just sound like you know you'd be playing them. You know, That's an, it's an electric sitar. I don't think I will um, play, uh, do our lesson on this <laughs> today, although it's pretty cool. Uh, and I feel like I got too much reverb too. That's like a little bit, that's better. Now I got too much delay. This is kind of my pseudo Pat Metheny sound. So um, that's better. So I, I don't want the effects to distract too much from what we're learning here. Crazy, you guys, are everybody doing good? Everybody doing good? Uh, hi, everybody. Chris, Chris Verdi, good to see you. Frankie, have you been on before? That looks like a new, hey, Rick, I remember Kevin, I've seen your name there before. Kevin R, no, yeah, super coach. Uh, Roger, you've been around. It's awesome, 25 people so far on. I'm going to get started so that we can hit the next thing we were going to do. Um, hungry pizza when we are done. Oh, you're hungry. You're going to get pizza when we're done. Okay. Well, that could be a couple hours from now if history is any judge. <laughs> so be careful there, Rick. Don't, <laughs> don't make a promise you can't keep. Uh, let's see, Frankie, I've been here for a couple of lessons. Okay, good. Well, and you can catch up. I've noticed that a lot of people have been watching them after the fact that the first lesson actually has over a thousand views on it, which is really cool. And keep in mind, I do make money from this. Uh, not, not a lot, but it, it, it definitely helps out. And since I've been doing these live lessons, my view count has gone way up, uh, mainly because I'm sitting here with you for <laughs> sometimes two hours. So, um, and, uh, but I, 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 I'm trying to keep it from being two hours that day, two days ago when I got, when I got a fever and I started feeling sick, it was, we did, we went a long time and I, I, you know, I don't know this, I feel like this energizes me, but it maybe takes more out of me than I think. Um, I've been powering orange juice, which seems to help. Now the fever went away the same day. So don't worry. Um, I recognize Frankie's 4chan face. Oh, hilarious. I, you know, is there a guitar thing on 4chan? Like there is on uh, Reddit, Verdi? Some, like I told you before, um, years years ago, when I went to Indianapolis in 2014 to pick up my mom to move her to California, um, I remember I told, I, I, I don't know if you saw that, but the, my Ebola story where I, I didn't have Ebola or anything like that, but I, I got food poisoning at the connection to Indianapolis and Houston, and everybody was freaking out about Ebola. And anytime someone threw up on a plane, even from morning sickness, and this was Texas, this is where the first case was. Everybody freaked out, and so I told the flight the um, the gate attendants that I was I got food poisoning. I'm feeling sick. I better not get on the plane. And they were really grateful. Um, but uh, while I was sitting in the uh, the United Club lounge because uh, I had a pass for it that came with my credit card, um, I uh, they uh, I, I watched my YouTube numbers go up by 800 in just a couple hours. Because um, somebody from, uh, I believe, Sweden went on uh, Reddit and said, why doesn't Tom have more subscribers? He's a really good teacher. And so that was really cool. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Vert, if you want to post at some point, just say, hey, you know, check out Tom's. If you don't know Tom already, check him out. Oh, no. You super glued it. Your index finger, really? Shoot, on your right hand or on your left hand, Chris? Chris cut his index finger. So I'm not sure right or left. Either is a problem. Um, I did do some of that super glue stuff. Sorry. Um, the uh, when I cut my third finger sliding up one because I was sweating a lot. Oh, you know what happened was I was wearing it. We were dressed up that weekend at church for some reason. Normally, I just wear jeans 
And we, I was wearing dress slacks that didn't absorb my hand sweat. So my hands were really wet because I, I sweat really bad in my hands. That's why I talk about, you know, I use elixir strings because they tend to last longer because um, they got that coating on them. Um, and I slid up the first string to do a, a note and I, it just slashed right there really bad. And it was like at the beginning of the set, you know, I still had three more sets to do and it was brutal. It hurt so bad. And then I, you know, was trying to play without my third finger, which is really hard. And then I caught the string in the, in the cut on the second time. I was like, ah, so bad. So, uh, le on your left hand. Okay. So that's your fretting hand. Yeah. So be careful. Um, I, but actually what I ended up doing was I ended up getting one of those, they're not butterfly band-aids. Are they the ones that kind of go like this and then wrap around? Um, maybe they're butterfly because they look like kind of a butterfly, uh, like an hourglass kind of band-aid. And I, that actually worked. I mean, it, my tone wasn't great and I couldn't really feel, but it actually got me through. I had to leave it on for about a month until it totally healed because I thought it healed one time and it didn't. I had the glue on it and stuff. I thought it healed and I, it just did it again. I re-injured it exactly. Hey, Lance. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, and I use tens. I th I, I'm uh, kind of afraid to use nine. Some of my guitars, I have nines on though, just because I want that thin lo-fi sound. So, um, electric sitar, but anyway, everyone, I have a review of it. So if you want to see the review, it's fairly old, but it's actually what one of my most um, viewed and the pickups hum a little bit because of these soap bar pickups. Uh, sorry, mute, um, share. Yeah, it's got 60,000 views. And, and the reason is there's not many reviews of this thing out there. So that's pretty good for, for uh, one of my videos. I mean, my, my seven tips for older beginners uh, video, it has almost 2 million views, which is crazy. Um, and that's how most of you came to my channel was catching that. Yeah, Verdi. Where where do you live, Verdi? Yeah, the nano webs are are, are not bad because they're less coating. The 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 poly webs are the original and they're very it's a little thicker. And sometimes they'll start to like get hairy <laughs> as you as it starts to come off. It was really bad on the nylon strings. Oh, you're in Albany. Okay. It was really bad on the um uh on the uh, classical strings. And that's why they stopped making them uh, because nylon strings just stretch so much. If you've ever restrung your nylon guitar, you'll know how much, um, oh, I can play this for now. You'll know how much it takes, how long it takes for you to kind of get it all, the strings all stretched out and all everything tuned up. Um, and uh, so what was happening with, I think the coating on the low three strings was, you know, as the string stretched, it was just coming separated and then just flaking off. And it wasn't really, I, I talked to him every year at the NAMM show and say, hey, when are you going to make the classical strings again? Because I loved them, even with the flake, even with the little furry bits on them, because they were so quiet. One of the problems with playing classical guitar is when you slide your hand up, it squeaks so bad. And when you're doing a solo, especially oftentimes when you're by yourself and you're being mic'd or whatever, that squeak can be really annoying. And if the engineer goes to try to turn the EQ down on the squeak, you lose all the top end on the guitar. So it's it's kind of a dragon. With the elixir strings, there was no squeak. It was great. Um, and I actually uh, had a bunch of USC students over at my house one time. Um, their, USC's got a great classical guitar department. And did anybody see me touch my face? You guys, you are just not paying attention. I swear you guys have another chat room that you're actually at. And you're just using this to kind of open that one up or something like that, right? You guys are all messing with me. You're not really there watching me. but So we have a game, if you're new to the channel, to the, to the live stream, we have a drinking game. Every time I touch my face, you have to take a drink. <laughs> it just sounds like Pat Metheny whenever I play sitar. Oh, 
Lydian. Diatonic major. Kind of fun to play, I have to admit. I love the sound. It's it's a it's like I said, it's not a sitar, it's an electric sitar, totally different instrument. Oh, when I do the review on on the electric sitar for for YouTube, it, I get all, all these people that are like sitar players are saying that's not a sitar. You know, I'm like, I know, I never said it was a sitar. It's an electric sitar, and it has its own history and its own sound. And the history only goes back to the '60s. So I'm not trying to say, you know, I would never say. Now this is the Schwarman doll. Now that's not in tune at all. But um, I have a, a actual another review of a. a, a, a a kind of a tabletop Schwarmendahl, which is these this thing, and um, Tanpura, which is the like kind of low low buzzy strings um, I, that I did a review of, and it's really really cool. I've only used it a couple times, but it's really fun. So yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. Um, so we're gonna I can do I can do the lesson on this. What the heck? We can we can start on it anyway. I'm having fun with it, so I might as well. So what we're gonna do? What we've done in the past? Um, it's hard because I want to put this down because it. I've got, I've got what we did, what we've done so far. We bet we were talking about uh, the modes. We did a bunch of mode stuff. So there's the first. You want to do a screen cap if you're new? Do that. You can crop out my face. I don't have. A, I'm not offended by that. Especially my hair. Oh my gosh! Look at that. It's just, just crazy mess. Okay. Now, I, uh, I could have done this. See, so you all have to take a sip now. Okay, so basically what we did here was we wrote a piano keyboard, quick review. I wrote the, we wrote the, wrote the word relative because all of these scales are related because they have the exact same DNA, the exact same notes in them. Um, and so I just wrote a C scale and then we did D to D and E to E and F to F and we consequently came up with major or Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian or minor and then Locrian, which is kind of a theoretical, theoretical scale. And so what we did was um, we have, we analyzed that. So we looked at that and go, how, what's the distance between the C and D? Well, that's a whole step. What's the difference distance between D and E? Well, that's a whole step. What about E and F? Well, E and F is one of our half steps. And that's why we put the carrots there. I, I learned that, that this is a carrot. And so we, we came up with formulas. So then we took those formulas and we created parallel scales. Parallel scales all start on the same note. So here's, these are this is an Ionian or major, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian scales, all starting on C, and they're all going to have different key signatures. Consequently, they're all related to different. And so, in other words, um, D, D, or I'm sorry, C Dorian has the same DNA as the key of B flat major. So these are the relative majors. But again, I, I don't need you to know that so much. But then what we did was we go, what did we do to, to the C scale to get the C Dorian scale. Well, we flatted the third and we flatted the, the seventh. And so here's another way, a simpler way than this to memorizing that all that, this mess here, whole, whole half, whole, whole half, that's just not going to happen. Um, it's just all, they're all too similar. So it's very difficult to memorize something that's almost sounds like the same thing, but memorizing that to make a Lydian scale, you just need to sharp the four in a major scale is pretty easy. So if you have a, a major scale, and we're going to do this today. We're going to take a C major scale and we're going to do that to all of them. So that's C major. We're going to take um, we're going to take the uh, fourth degree, one, two, three, four, and we're going to raise it up a half step to, to F sharp. And that creates a, a C Lydian scale. So, you know, for the most part, what we did is easier to remember then, especially for the scales we're going to use, like Dorian, Lydian, Mixolydian, those are in minor. Now, here's the other thing you can do. If you memorize what the, the minor thing is, and you can do a comparison and compare contrast 
with the minor because the minor is closely related to the Phrygian and the Dorian. You change one note in the minor scale and you're going to have a Dorian scale. And if you change one note in the minor scale, you'll have a Phrygian if you, you add a flat. So, so they're, they're all, the minors are fairly closely related. Locrian doesn't, isn't related to anybody. It's an orphan. <laughs> it totally is an orphan scale. Okay, then we wrote out the, we, that first page, this, we wrote out all of these scales in open position. Okay, and that's where we got this. You can take a screenshot if you want. And we created all, uh, okay, just so you know, everyone, uh, Pepper has to potty. So <laughs> it's because I'm touching my face too much. <laughs> so she doesn't, she's gone. So she doesn't know we're talking about her right now. Anybody else got anything to say about Pepper? <laughs> well, she's in the bathroom. <laughs> um, so those are so th what we did there was we create we just played what we wrote initially the 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 um the relative scales in the key of C so we had C major okay and this is guitar make you sneeze and then uh the uh it does kind of it's like Peter Griffin if Peter Griffin were a guitar it would sound like this so there's D Dorian, then we have E Phrygian. And then we look, oh, well, actually, we did that here. And then we had F Lydian. And then we had G Mix Lydian. <laughs> She's like, no! And then A minor. And these are the ones we learned yesterday. There's the low cream. Okay. So again, what I just played was this. And what you can do with these is if you want to play a C chord and then start noodling around on this and then play C chord again, noodle around on this, you can kind of hear the relationship. And then the same thing. I started to say this yesterday. I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify, you know, I started at the beginning of the video yesterday. I talked about this and I didn't really tie it together with this, but I'll I'll do it now. It, it, you can play a D minor chord. Like I said, the Dorian, the Phrygian. And the minor are minor, obviously, are all minor scales of some kind. And then the the um, the Ionian or major, the Lydian and the Mixolydian are all types of major scales. Okay, uh, they're built around the major scale, and they're very easy to get to from the major scale. Just like I said that the the Phrygian, I mean, uh, yeah, the Phrygian and the Dorian are fairly easy to get to from this, as far as making minor changes. Um, so, uh, but what you could do is we remember we talked about the two five one progression, which we actually did two five one six progression for the jazz. So it was like D minor, G, the the one chord, C, and then A minor. So what you could do is you know the jazz is going by boom, so when you're playing it with the one chord, you could play you could play. Um, you can play a C major scale. When you're playing over the sixth chord, you play the A minor scale. Because that's the sixth scale in the key. And then when it goes to the D chord, you can play the D Phrygian. I mean, sorry, D Dorian. And then when it goes to the G7 chord, you can play G Mixolydian. So there is there is a review of yesterday. So what we're going to do today is um, oh shoot I didn't do my prep work. I would write. Go ahead and do some if you want. You can print them up if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and write some uh, big. Notice I have five frets. I, give yourself five frets because you're going to need it at times. There's going to be a couple times where you're going to need five frets. And I'm going to make myself a little desk here out of my Jerry Jones electric sitar so that I can. Uh, do some prep work, okay? Talks amongst yourselves. Mm, I'll just do it. Um, and then what else? So we didn't put out any fires today. We went on a very long walk. I bet you we walked 9,000 steps this morning. We got way far afield and I'm like, you yeah, know, we might want to turn around. Um, but Beth didn't put out any fires. Today, yesterday, she put out a fire, literally with, got a, somebody had left their 
outdoor, you know, one of those outdoor fire pits. They, I guess they didn't put all the embers out or something. And I think they probably hadn't used it since last night, but you know how that is. If it sits there for 12 hours, it can start, you know, and the wind starts blowing and the, the, the thing was right up against it. It had a giant aluminum hood on it. So it was actually a really, really big fire pit kind of thing. It was right up against the hedge. <laughs> It's like, and there's a right next to it was a grill, like right up against the hedge. I mean, my grill, I have like brick all around it. It's like crazy. It's like, you, you know, the how it's like behind the grill is probably five feet high of brick so that it can't touch the, it can't touch the stucco of the house. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move these. We're gonna need seven of these because we have seven diatonic scales. Okay. So if you want to get ahead on this. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create parallel scales. We're going to create uh, seven C scales. We're going to do C major or Ionian, C Dorian, C Phrygian, C Lydian, C Mixolydian, C um, Aeolian, and then C Locrian. So that's six different, I'm sorry, seven <laughs> different. I keep saying six, seven different. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do two things. I'm walking down the street and chewing gum and patting my head and stomach at the same time. Whatever. I'm in basically. I'm in Granada Hills, so North Valley, uh, pretty much where the 405 and the 118 hit connect. If you know where that is. So we. I was in Pasadena for since '83 until last year. So we just moved here here from Pasadena, uh, but we just had an apartment in Pasadena. And uh, finally got around to buying a house and uh, couldn't afford. We tried to get into Pasadena, but the problem was every house that we wanted, there were 15 offers on. So we weren't the only ones that wanted it. We got to this one and it was, we were the only offer on it. And it was kind of like, what's wrong? And they took our offer right away. I'm like, what's wrong with this house? And so far, not much. So we're actually pretty stoked. And it's really, really nice in this. I mean, our living space is twice what it was in the apartment. And we shared that with, uh, yeah, Andrew. You, yeah, Andrew's stayed in my apartment in Pasadena. He hasn't yet to be the to come to the house. Andrew, are you? Did they? Are they gonna? Are you still gonna come down to work with somebody that we can we can't talk about? Down, not not now, but later. Are they still talking about doing that? I know the whole. I know the whole tour. Beaver's tour got canceled. Uh, not canceled, but delayed. Every, say everybody, keep your tickets. And you know, what's funny is I get paid every time he does one of my songs live and um, stuff like that in Europe. I would make a couple hundred bucks every time he did it, which is crazy. Really kind of cool. Yeah, we, you know, we lived at, we, I managed the building. Part of the reason I'm in a house is because for 25 years, I didn't pay rent. So um, we basically were saving and saving and saving and put two kids to, through college and, um, but Pasadena is great. And I, you know, we miss it, but I miss the restaurants in Pasadena. I don't miss the crowds. Um, but cause where we live is pretty chill. We walk, you know, every day. So, all right. And, and Pepper, we were talking about you, by the way, when you were, when you went to the bathroom, <laughs> uh, well, and, and Andrew, let me know when you're going to be down here. Okay. Well, yeah, I know you will. So we'll hang. Uh, yeah, it's a very strange banjo, Steve. This is an electric sitar. Um, so the first scale we're going to do is the C major scale. We're just going to do one octave of it. We're going to do it here on the uh, start. Every note's going to start at the fit, uh, fifth string, third fret. We may use our first finger, and we may use our second finger to play the scale. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. Actually... Yeah, yeah, even for the the, the Locrian, we're going to use our first finger. So um, so start, but this time we're going to start with our second finger there. And the great thing about this, though, is when you learn this scale, like, for example, the first scale, C major, it's there are no open strings, so it's completely movable. So if you go up one fret, it's C sharp major or D flat, same thing. D major, next fret. And not a bad idea to do this, to practice it all the way up. Because the frets get smaller as you go. And so you want to be able to, 
you want to be comfortable up here too. A lot of players just kind of spend all the time here. And then when they need notes up here, they really, they miss them or they go sharp because they, they extend too much because they think, Oh, the frets aren't that small. So pepper, it was pretty much all good. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the same finger picking, same pattern all the way up. Okay. So we're going to learn that right now. So everybody get your guitars out and then we're going to write them down after we learn them. So we're going to start with uh, third fret, fifth string, second finger, then pinky. We've done this before with the diatonic scales, okay, uh, that we did before. So these, a lot of these things will be familiar. So pinky on the fifth fret, next string down, second, fifth, second fret with the first finger. Uh, third finger. Fourth finger. I'm sorry, second finger on the third fret. Fourth finger on the fifth fret. Second fret, first finger, third finger on the fourth fret, and then last note is going to be the pinky on the fifth fret of the of the G string. So we're going to go. Let me do that again. So starting with your and we're this is position playing, so we can really consider ourselves in second position because the first finger is going to get all the notes on the second fret. The third second finger is going to get all the notes on the third fret. Fourth finger the third finger is going to get all the notes on the fourth fret, and the fourth finger is going to get all the notes on the fifth fret. So they're going to stay in these lanes. Okay, so it's. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. And the great thing about this, if you go down one string and start it again, it's still a major scale, but now it's whatever the starting note is. And that's going to be true with all these. These We're going to do C Dorian, whatever the note, the first note is, that's going to be our root. So the root, this will be G major. <laughs> So that's the first one. Okay. Sorry. Did, did Verdi get your answer for you there, Pepper? Let me, um, let me write this out. And this one I can actually write um, on the correct frets. I won't be able to do that with all these, but. Okay. And this is C major. All right. There's the first one. If you want to copy that. All right. Notice the first, the lowest note is on the third fret of the fifth string. And that's our C. And that note's going to be in every one of these scales. And the last note will be in every one of these scales. So we're going to start and end. No worries. Okay. So now we want to do, um, we're going to do C Dorian. So the C Dorian scale, and I'll try to slow it down a little bit here, but this one actually feels pretty good. Um, put your first finger on uh, the, well, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have a shift on this one, okay? So put your first finger on C, and that's on the uh, third fret of the fifth string, then third finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and there's our D, and then we need a half step. There's our E flat. Sounds like <laughs> but it's very minor sounding. It will it will sound Dorian when we get to the sixth note. So we're only three in. Okay, and then the next string on the, the D string, we go third fret with our first finger, and then fifth fret with our third finger. Okay? And you can practice you can practice little snippets like that. You don't have to do the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. It, everybody's catching on pretty good, though. Okay. And then to finish this off, we have one more string. Okay. Second. So we're going to have to shift down to the second fret. So now we're first finger on the second fret of the G string. Second finger on the third on the third fret, and then pinky on the fifth fret. So we have three. I'm giving you fret numbers here. Three, five, six, three, five, two, three, five. Backwards. Five, three, two, five. Three, 
and then six, five, three. And you'll notice that when I came back, when I was here, I had to kind of shift and I went ahead and led with my third finger. You can use your pinky if you want and then, and then kind of bring in your first finger. You can do it either way, like that, or you can, go, you can reach like that. It's hard to look, I'm looking at the mirror here. Okay, so that's C Dorian. All right. So I'm going to write that one out. Um, and I'm going to have to put that at the second. So I'm going to have to put a two next to it. So, so check it out. You're going to have to write it out this way because we're literally using all five frets this time. Okay. So I put a two there so you can, because we have to jump down. Okay. So before I, I was able to have a, a gap, a space, but I can't, I don't have enough frets to do that here. So that's the C Dorian. All right. So it's kind of a one, three, four fingers and one, three, and then one, two, four. So it kind of uses all, all the combinations. So, so, uh, let's see. Dennis, so who, so like who is doing Dorian again or is that pushing it? So, yeah, two is the second fret. Exactly right. Yep, exactly right. So, I, I, I that's the second fret. So, this will be the first, the, the C note's going to be the same. It's always going to be third fret on the fifth string, but sometimes I'm going to be able to write it like this, but mostly I'm going to have to do this. And, you know, if I did a six, if I did a six fret diagram, we could have done it that way. All right. So the next one is le a less common core scale, uh, and it's C Phrygian. Um, now, this one we will be able to play in one position. Um, so we're going to start with C, as they all do. And then we're going to go to the second finger on the fourth fret. And then pinky on the sixth fret. All right. And then we're going to next string, we're going to go. So that was one, two, four, fingering wise. One, two, four. Uh, fret wise, it's three, four, six. Hard to see because my finger, this finger, it looks like I'm using that, but I'm not. Next string is one, three, four. So we're going to be at the third fret. Then at the fifth fret and then the sixth fret. So one, first finger, third finger, fourth fret. Um, okay, so, and this is the Phrygian scale. And that's spelled like this. If, Dorian, you spelled it right there, um, Dennis. Phry Phrygian. It's Phrygian. And um, so Phrygian, the notes in the Phrygian are C, D flat, E flat, F, G, um, A flat, and B flat, and then C. Those are the notes we're playing. So it starts right away with a half step. And then the last is third fret and fifth fret. First finger and third finger. It sounds great on this guitar, or on the sitar. It sounds cool on, on, the, on the sitar, so, because uh, it's got a kind of a, a Middle Eastern or a kind of an Asian sound to it, almost a kind of a foreign, it definitely sounds foreign. It doesn't sound very Western, but it's a very Western scale. Okay, so now I'm gonna write this one down. And um, uh, and then I'll hold it up so you can see. But this one's C, Phrygian. Let's see. We're going to do. Yeah, I mean, I can write this down. To, so the bottom note's going to be the third fret. I can write it like this. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I almost made a mistake. I was just playing it wrong. I was playing a minor just then. Okay, so at the third fret, this is what you would have. Well, especially sounds Indian on this instrument, doesn't it? 
Aerosmith. Yeah, so there, and you know, you can wait to do the screen cap, but if you just want to copy my work, you can do that. Uh, you can wait to do the screen cap until we have all of the skaters done. Okay. All right. So the next one is going to be C. Lydian. Well, okay, let's just reiterate our lesson from a couple days ago. Remember, we said what what we did, what did we do to the major scale to create a Lydian scale? Because we, we just learned the major scale. Now, I don't expect you to remember it right now. We just We just now learned it. But the C major scale. What note do we change? Verdi, you know. Uh, what note do we change um, in um, the major scale to make it Lydian? Anybody know that? I'm taking a drink. Okay, <laughs> go get pizza, Rick. Yeah, you can catch up later. What note is, uh, thank you, Verdi. Exactly right. So we're gonna have C, D, E, F, sharp, G, A, B, C. So it's basically like a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, but it's got an F sharp. Exactly, thank you, Keith, you got it. Kimberly, you too, you nailed it, all right? So we're gonna play that. So that's gonna be, start on C with our second finger this again. It's almost exactly like playing the major scale, but we're gonna make one change. So we got second finger on the third fret, pinky on the fifth fret, first finger on the second fret, third finger on the fourth fret, pinky on the fifth, first finger on the second, third finger on the fourth, and pinky on the fifth. Okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna give you uh, I'm gonna give you fret numbers starting on the fifth string three five next string two three five next string two four I'm sorry sorry on the site on the fourth string it's two three five that's our di that's our that's our Lydian tone I totally did it wrong so sorry about that so one I'm sorry third fret fifth fret Second, four, five, two, four, five. So it's two, two, five, one. God, what am I doing? So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm doing fingers. My, I'm confusing fingers with, uh, I haven't had enough coffee. That's the problem. I'm taking another drink. Okay. So fret-wise, it's three, five, two, four. Four, five, two, four, five. So again, what we're doing is we're finding, um, we're finding all of the the modes, all seven modes, diatonic modes in starting on a C. So we're doing C major. C Dorian, C Phrygian, we just finished C Lydian, okay? So we've done four out of the seven so far. And the cool thing about this is, again, they're movable up and down the fretboard, the fingering stay the same. So Lydian, if I go up here to G, that's still. That's also Lydian. Um, if I moved it down a string, maybe go up here to the to the uh, start on the sixth fret of the bottom string. That's B flat Lydian. We're just doing one octave of the scale. You can, if you really, if you want to expand this, you can go. You can continue on, but we're just. I'm trying to keep it in little bite sized chunks, so it's a fairly easy to digest. Literally. Okay, so let me write this one down, and this is the C Lydian. My brain is just not working today. Um, so let's see the best way to write this out. Okay. So we're going to do second fret here. Oh, I could have done it. I don't need to write any fret number. I can just do it right here. I don't know where my brain is today. Usually I'm so on top of it, right? Everybody. <laughs> okay. So there's C Lydian. So if you want to copy my work, I, I started to write two and I realized I don't have to. Like It's like the first one. I can really just put it in the actual position. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, 
You could think of it that way, Verdi. 100%. Yep. Now, the first one you wrote, oh, that's the major. You're writing the major. Yeah. <laughs> Lydian Sip. So my, I had a band in high school called Lydian Sip, actually. Pretty funny that you would say that. Okay. Now, the Mixolydian, the C Mixolydian, is a, remember, okay, so what note did we change to create, take a major and make it uh, Mixolydian? I know people know that. So we, when we learned what we did, there is one note um, that we have to change in a major scale to make it Mixolydian, which is crazy. All right, let's see. Oh, nice. Congratulations, Dennis. My first electric, my first two electrics were Ibanez. I still have both of them from the 70s. That's right. Flat seven, exactly right, Lance. You ever very no, Verdi, flat seven. Oh, you knew you messed up. You typed too fast. Everybody's right. So basically, that's the major scale. So to make a major scale, a, a Mixolydian scale, which, by the way, works great over seventh chord. So if you're playing over a C7 chord. That's that scale. The scale works really good over seventh chords. OK. All right. So we have start on the second finger on the third fret of the fifth string. Pinky on the fifth fret. And then we're going to go. One, two, four, one, two, four. So on the Lydian, we went one, three, four, one, three, four. And on the, the Mixolydian, we're going to go one, two, four, one, two, four. So it's one, two, four, one, two, four. 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 Hey, Paul, good to see you. Don't worry, we're gonna, I'm going to hold up the thing. When we're all done, you can do a screenshot at the end. But I'm going to write this one out. It's all pretty much Mixolydian right there, what I just did. Okay, so let me write this out. And again, this one I can write out in position on the on the fretboard here diagram. So I'm just going to write, boom. I don't need to put a fret number, which is great. Uh, let's see, what do we want? Here, 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 here. Okay. So there's our C Mixolydian scale. All of these are completely movable. So every one of these equals 12 scales. You can play each one of these on a different fret and it would be a different scale until you got up an octave. And this is all, I'm, I'm doing this down low on the fretboard so we can all play it on acoustic. If you watch yesterday's lessons, I did the seven diatonic scales related to the key of C. Um, they all have the same notes in them, and uh, those were all in open position, so you can play them down low. And then um, after today, we're done with the modes for the most part. I think we did – did we do five days on the modes? We did the caged method for – where this is 17, so I think we did the caged method for like 12 days in a row. Then we did modes for either five or six, so you can just go back five or six or so. I am going to probably, if I've got some downtime, I've been so busy, which is great. Um, I'm so glad I'm busy. It's just such a blessing. Thank God for video games because they're still work. There's people are playing like crazy right now. Um, so work has been really good. And because um, my wife isn't working, she, she's a uh, substitute teacher, so she's not able to work. So this is really helping out that that my work is, is coming in heavy right now. Uh, but also I'm doing movies and TV shows and all sorts of stuff, uh, records. I'm working on records, everything. So all of my clients are just calling me like crazy. So that's been really good. 
Um, so uh, we're going to um, start, I think, chord theory, right? Was there another thing? I, well, I want to do, at some point, I want to do a circle of fists lesson. I just think that's one day. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Um, I just want you to uh, um, uh, understand it. Um, but we're going to use the, basically, um, we're going to use the, the, the major uh, formula to create major scale, and we're going to start building chords on that. So you'll understand uh, chord theory a little bit better. Okay. And, uh, and then you'll, you're going to see, it's going to be cool. Uh, like I said, I've been teaching for so long. I haven't taught privately. That's why I kind of started my YouTube channel to kind of get all the stuff that I've been, all the, the uh, pedagogy that I created by teaching private guitar lessons for 35 years. Um, I wanted to get the, all that pedagogy up on, on the internet. I actually literally started teaching guitar lessons. I think when I was, I think I was 15 or 13. I can't remember now. But I remember going to, I used to, uh, no, I, I would have been 15 because it was at the high school. Um, I, I go to, I show up at my high school with, and I'm carrying my guitar. I have my guitar because I had a really cool high school that allowed me to practice guitar during study hall. So they would let me go to the music wing during study hall and practice guitar, which is crazy. <laughs> and so I would sit in there and just literally make up scales and write things out. Basically what I'm doing with you right now, I was doing, you know, in, in study hall. And um, one of the teachers saw me walking with my guitar case and she goes, you teach guitar lessons? I say, well, not, I, I never have. And she goes, will you teach my son how to play? So she picked me up, took me to her, their house, paid me five dollars for a half hour lesson and took me home. <laughs> it was like I was like, this is this is gold, baby. <laughs> you know, 15 year old kid making five dollars and 30 minutes. Are you kidding me? So that was the beginning. And then um, and then I started teaching at the guitar store that I was studying at. Um, they needed a guitar teacher and I'd kind of gone through all the teachers and learned everything I could learn. And so they said, Hey, you know, would you like to teach her? And I said, sure. So I started with, I think I had, they had a teacher quit and he let, he had five students or four students. And I had those four students and I had those four students. Some of them were with me the entire time I taught there for three and a half years before I moved to California. So drinking game. If I touch my face, you got to take a drink. Doing my part to keep the world hydrated. I'm going to follow that that orange juice up with a coffee chaser. Sip. And no, I didn't really have a band named Liddy and Sip. I just say that every time somebody says something weird, I say, yeah, that's weird. I had a band named that. In fact, at my funeral, I've instructed people to get up and, and tell me to say at my funeral, their the band they had in high school. <laughs> so that's not, anyway. Okay, so we're uh, we've got two more to do. A minor. I mean, sorry, the minor scale. A minor scale. I meant to say. Um, and so we're gonna start on C, and we need a one, two. So it's gonna be C, B, E flat, F, G, A flat, and B flat, and C again. So this scale has three flats, which means it's the same as the key of E flat, which also has three flats. Very good, Bruce. <laughs> I know you're Michelle. Okay, so here we go. First fret. I'm sorry, first finger on the third fret of the fifth string. And then we're gonna go one, three, four. And we're gonna do the same thing on the next string. One, three, four. And then one, three. So again, slowly, that's C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. Backwards, third finger on the third string on the fifth fret. First finger on the third fret of the third string. Pinky on the sixth fret of the fourth string. It's a lot of numbers. Third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. First finger on the third fret of the fourth string. Pinky on the fifth fret of the, sorry, sixth fret of the fifth string. Third finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string. And first finger on the third fret of the fifth string. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm just I'm just messing around. Um, yeah, jazz songs often are built around um, two five one progressions and blues progressions. Those are the two most common progressions in jazz. Not that's not exclusively giant steps. Um, has two five ones in it. Uh, what, did, what am I doing here? What did I do? That's it. Yeah, so it's, you know, B to D7 to B, G. It's kind of got two fives, a lot of two fives, or a lot of five ones, but not too many twos. Uh, but two five one, okay, that's a legitimate question. Um, let me write out that scale we just did. Keith, remember that, okay? Because we talked about this yesterday. And the other term you'll hear a lot is a one four five progression, and one four five is is typically like a blues progression. Would be one four five. Uh, let's see on this one. So I can just write third fret right here. Oh wait, yeah, I can't. I can't. I have to. So one. Okay, now so this is C minor. All right, so here we go. Take screenshots if you want to have this, but you can wait. We're gonna we got one more. You can wait for until we're done with the low crane. One, uh, yeah, one minor six four five is like the most common, like nineteen fifties progression. Uh, whenever you hear this. <laughs> It's basically a numbers, uh, ascribing numbers to chords so that you can transpose it. So like you, you said two, you said one, six, four, five, right, Chris? So basically in that, you know, and we use it in LA too, but it's a, it's called the Nashville method or the Nashville number system. Um, the reason they utilize that so much is because they're doing millions of demos every day in Nashville, songwriter demos, mostly just for the money, the you know, people that can't write songs, send songs in and they, hey, send us, you know, $200 and we'll do a demo of your song. And so people are like, oh, I'm going to be a famous country songwriter. And so they literally will do 10 an hour. And just for speed sake, they'll they'll do numbers and then the singer will say, you know, what key they want to sing it in. And that way they can just say, yeah, let's play it in G. And then they'll, so one chord would be G and the, the six chord would be E minor. The four chord would be C and the five chord would be D. And you would just know that. Um, and because um, you would have done it so many times. But that allows you to transpose a song to any key on the fly and not have to sit there and change. Like if we want, oh, let's do it in A instead. So now A, the one chord is A, and the, now the six chord is going to be F sharp minor, and the, the five, four chord is going to be D, and the five chord is going to be E. And that way you don't have to go through and change all the Gs to As and all the E minors to F sharp minors. You just know it, and you use the 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 – the uh, the number system, and then in the blues, a typical blues, very simple blues would be would only utilize the one four five, not in that order, uh, but it would go you know a lot of times one four one. I'm just cracking up on my sitar. Back to four. Back to one. And then finally to five. And then to four. And the numbers are, are, are derived by just counting up the scale tones. So if you start on one, like we start on our C here, we count up four. One, two, three, four. Start on and count the first one. That's one, two, three, four. And this is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Okay, so if you want to know more about this two, five, one thing, you'll understand it better when we start when we start creating chords, okay, we're going to start using, we're going to learn chord theory tomorrow. We're going to start there. 
Um, and we're going to take it. I don't know how far, how fast I'm going to go. We're just going to go because I'm going to try to get you to do a lot of the work over here so that I can uh, make sure that you're understanding what we're doing. And I love how you help each other out. That just like blows me away. This is such a great community right here. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, we're all going to meet in Paris when this is all over. We're going to meet in a cafe in Paris. Uh, but if you go kind of one, two, three, four, then the chord built on this note is the four chord and the chord, the five, the chord built on the five is the five chord. And that's how you get it. So if you, the two, two, five, one would be the chord built on two, the chord built on five and the chord built on one, which would be. Two. And so a lot of times you. Jazz will constantly be modulating those two five ones all over the place, you know. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I'd have to get my real book out if I were to do that. So, uh, Le Club Hot, it is still open. Well, not right now, of course, Michelle. But um, when I was in Paris, uh, it was. I've been in Paris. I've been to Paris a couple times, and I, you know, because I'm a huge I'm a big Django Reinhardt fan. Um, uh, I checked it out. I don't remember if I went, but it was open. I just don't know that it was in an area that I wanted to go to in the middle of the night. <laughs> I did go to a couple of jazz clubs. In fact, I saw uh, someone there and I talked to him afterwards and I have a friend from Paris named David Lavray, who's a phenomenal bass player. And I said, I lived in LA and he said, <laughs> and at the time I was literally playing with David every Saturday morning at a church, David Lavray. And um, the guy said, do you happen to know da David Lovray? And I go, David Lovray, are you kidding? I play with him every Saturday. The guy freaked out. I mean, here I fly, fly 6,000 miles and I go to a random club in the middle of the night and I sit down next to the band and I start talking to him. And he was like, the only person I know from Paris. And he mentions his name. And I'm like, that's great. But they were like, David's very famous here. I'm like, why? Because, <laughs> oh, he moved to LA. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make you famous. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Uh, Yes, two is minor, and the other four, five and five and one are both major, and that's what we're going to talk to about tomorrow. Okay, um, okay. So, did I show you this? That's the we got that right. So now we're going to do the last one, which is Locrian, which see Locrian. That was the one that had the one um, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, plus seven. That's the that's what we did to. A diatonic scale one two three four five six seven to get to Locrian. So we take a major scale and we flat the D and we flat the E and we flat the G and we flat the A and we flat the E. Hard to do. We get oh I did C flat. Sorry, I got, see that's what I mean. It's hard to do. There we go. This is right. Check my work, but I think that's right. I didn't put spaces. Um, <laughs> cats are on the keyboard. <laughs> What is that with cats? They just want to be the center of attention. We actually Beth is waking up the cat every hour right now because she woke her up every three hours or two every two hours last night. I'm like that cat is the cat is just being a brat right now. It peed in one of my tennis shoes. Cat pee. Cat pee smells so bad. I'm like walking around the house. It was like deep down in there. I was like squishy. I'm hearing squishy sound. I'm like what the heck? And I <laughs> took my shoe off and I was like, oh god, <laughs> it's so gross. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, here's the thing though. Okay. I believe cats and dogs are both put on this world. Dogs, well, so cats, cats were given to us to teach us how to, to give unconditional love because you get nothing back from a cat. And dogs were put on this world to teach us to receive unconditional love because you can do anything to a dog and the dog's still going to be happy to see you. Um, I really can't <laughs> peace sip. Thanks, Lance. <laughs> but I really do believe that. I think it's, I, I, I'm not a big dog person. I certainly am not thrilled with, you know, my dog over there isn't barking. Fortunately, the dog's not barking so much. I think what the issue was, it was just a new neighbor and they were getting the house ready or doing something in the house and the dog was getting in the way. So I think they just had him out all the time. The poor dog was yelping, like, let me in, let me in. And he was just, they were ignoring him. And I thought, oh, this is great. Not, not what I want in a new neighbor. Um, Exactly. That's Pepper. That's exactly basically the exact same point. Um, and so I think it's really good. In fact, you know, I, I take it to a spiritual level in our relationship with God. We have to be able to receive his unconditional love and he calls us to give unconditional love. 
uh, to others. So I feel like that it's that's why cats and dogs exist on a spiritual level. So, um, yeah, and, and I love people that have both cats and dogs and they get along. OK, so <laughs> not what this channel is supposed to be talking about. All right. So we're going to do that scale now and we got to have a lot of flats, but it's, it's really not that hard of a scale to play. It's actually going to be one of the easiest ones as far as our position goes. So get your first finger on that C note. So we're at the third fret, first finger on C, fifth string, and then second finger, and then fourth finger. Okay, one, two, four. So fret-wise, that's three, four, six, and the same thing on the next string. Because there's our G flat. There's our diminished sound. Okay, so one, two, four. But fret-wise, it's three, four, six. And then the last one's just one, three. It wants to go to D flat. That's the relative major. It wants to go up one more fret to resolve to that D flat, in my opinion, you know. <laughs> It sounds very Dory. Uh, it sounds very Locrian if you, if you, um, if you kind of drone that C note and play all the others. I'm barring right here. In fact, that's a good exercise you can do with every one of these scales if you want. You can do this. Everything will sound very modal, whatever mode you're in. If you keep hitting that root note. Um, we talked about that the other day about how I think Verdi, you were asking me how to create those those chord progressions in, that I have in my jam tracks for the modes. And you you can go to my jam track uh, page um, and uh, see lots of uh, where is it? There they are. I have seventy two jam track videos. Hopefully soon there'll be seventy three. Here's the link for that. So you can bookmark this and go to this later and you can practice playing in all the modes if you want. I've got a lot of them there. 70. I don't think I've done all of them, but there was a time when I was doing a lot of them because I was getting spins on them and it was basically, you know, just it took me maybe an hour to do the, not even an hour to do the video uh, and upload it and everything. So it wasn't, didn't take very long. Um, yeah. And the bar thing really, we're just, I'm just barring two strings or three strings. So you don't necessarily have to bar all of them. And of course, if you're playing on electric, it's going to be a little bit easier because the action could be lower and the str strings could be lighter. So it's a little bit easier to do bars on, um, uh, on electric guitars than acoustic guitars. Everybody has problem with the F. Well, part of the problem with the F chord is because you're fighting the nut. The nut is trying to hold the strings up and you're trying to push them down. Whereas the further up the fretboard you go, the more you'll notice how squishy the strings are here. Right at the 12th fret's the exact halfway point. That's the squishiest. Okay. And here, I had a band in high school called Squishy Strings. See, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? David, totally everything. <laughs> Hey, is it annoying you? Is this really like ticking you off? It's pretty funny because somebody asked me recently to do a. Um, uh, yes, every, somebody asked me to do a, um, like do another review of this playing like heavy metal sounds and stuff like that. I haven't done that yet, but part of the problem is these lipstick pickups are very noisy. Um, so anytime I put a lot of gain on them, it's going to be serious hum and buzz. I would probably, in that case, I would probably have a lot of noise gate on there. Okay, so I'm going to put another three here. This is the last one. C Locrian, and we're gonna go first finger. Do, do, do. Now we have all of them on here. So if you want to, I'm gonna give a bonus one. Okay, I'm gonna give you a bonus one. Verdi probably will be excited about this. All right. Uh, so if you want, so we have all seven modes represented: C major, C Dorian, C Phrygian. These are all starting on the same note and ending on the same note. They all start on C, same fret, the C on the fifth string, third fret, and they end on the fifth fret of the third string, C. Here's C Lydian, here's C Mixolydian, here's C minor, and here's C Locrian over here. And some of them are nice and compact, like Locrian, Major, Lydian, Dorian. And then, well, they really, you know, I'm sorry, Dorian is the only one that actually uses two frets or it needs to go to extend, okay? So that's not too bad, right? 
All of those are pretty darn compact and all of them are completely movable. Not only up and down the fifth string, starting on the fifth string, up and down. So basically this is, we've got seven, seven scales here. We really have 84 scales, but you can also move them down to the, you can go down one string. And if you, if you put your starting note on the bottom string, you've also got another 84 scales there. It'll work there as well. So it's really, like I said, I love to maximize um, knowledge. I like to take, uh, I've, I love to find shortcuts that allow you to, to learn a bunch of new things by learning one thing or two things, like one thing plus another thing equals a hundred things. It's like multiplication, basically, you know, you know, five times five plus five is 10, but five times five is 25. So I love to do multiplication when I'm learning stuff. Okay. So the minor scale we have was here. Um, so that was, I don't know if I wrote it C, D, E flat, F, G. Yeah, I did write this out. A flat, B flat, C. Oops, C. There's the minor scale. It's basically one. So it'd be one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and then one again, or roots. You know what? Now I'll just put one. I don't want, it's just easier. But one and root are the same thing. Bebop scales. Um, Chris, that's a great question. Um, that's for later. Um, but, uh, and I have to remember there, there is a bebop scale. I can't remember what it is, to be honest. Um, uh, I probably play it without knowing it. There's, well, uh, I'm not sure. Go Google it because you'll probably have, there may be more than one opinion about what it is, but what we're going to do to this minor scale is we're going to make it harmonic minor. Okay, and talk about the perfect instrument for the harmonic minor thing. David, you're talking about sounding very Middle Eastern or or in, like India on this thing. It makes it more so. Everything sounds like you said Phrygian on this. Um, but we're going to take this minor scale. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. We're going to go, we're going to get rid of the flat seven and make it a seven. So we're going to give give it a stronger leading tone. So it's gonna sound like this. And the reason is because in C minor, oftentimes we want a, a G major. This is true of pop music, very true of pop music. Okay, especially any, any pop music that has Spanish influences to it. Um, so, so how do you accommodate in the theory, how do you accommodate that G, that G major chord? Well, you have to take that that B flat and go to B natural. So the notes then are C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, and then B, C. And that's, that would be C harmonic. Okay. And so we're going to play first finger on the C, same starting note we've done every time. Third finger on the D, which is the fifth fret of the fifth string. Pinky on the E flat, sixth fret. Everybody have their guitar out. Um, and then down to the fourth string, third fret with the first finger, that's F. And then here's our G right here, which is the third fret. I mean, I'm sorry, third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. <laughs> All those numbers, dang it. Then pinky on the sixth fret of the fourth string. And then we're gonna go second finger on the B, which is the new note, uh, which is at the fourth fret of the third string and then resolve to C. And it really fits this instrument. And you could go through and do all the modes on that if you wanted to, you could start all the modes. That would be the D mode of, of the C minor and so on and so forth. We're not gonna do that. But I did did think you could do, um, you could, you could do, um, uh, we could we could handle learning one more scales because because really this information is information we already had we're just applying it to the fretboard so the first um, three lessons we did on modes were almost sans guitar almost thinking more piano looking at the piano more for the information and then now we've done two lessons two, the last two days have been more guitar application okay so this scale third fret like this. So now you can get your screen cap ready. And this is C harmonic minor. All right. All right. 
and feel free to crop out my face. This would be the time for me to touch my face if I wanted to, but I feel like you need to stay hydrated. So I, I, I'd rather have you guys catch me touching my face. All right. And that, you know, I can't touch my face with my fingers showing. So, all right. So there, I think, was that all in picture? Did I get too close? It's not bad, but I would prefer that you write this out yourself. So if you want to copy this in your own hand later, that's just another layer of learning. That's another opportunity for you to knock it in your head one more time. Um, and then the Bebop scale, uh, I could Google that right now. I, I'm wondering if it's, it's a similar thing. We can do, we can make a similar alteration to one of our scales, change one note. And I think it's this, but I could be completely wrong. Bebop scale, Bebop scale mix in. Oh, that scale. Bebop, root. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bebop major scale. Interesting. Uh, yeah. That's weird. I don't know. Bebop dominant scale. That one. Okay. That one makes sense. Bebop. Okay. I was thinking something else, actually. Um, but basically, they were saying, I got to make sure I don't close this window by mistake. Uh, basically, doing it, doing a chromatic, so mixolydian scale with a major seventh. But they also said, which could make some sense because that, that A flat, that sounds very not Western. So I don't know. I, the other one you could do though, is you could take the mixolydian scale. If you want to go over that one again, I'll, I'll talk you through it. A uh, second finger on the C. So the two, the, the second note is D, fifth fret there, and then next string, one, first finger, second finger, fourth finger, and then second finger, I'm sorry, first finger, second, fourth. So it's two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. Okay, that's mixolydian. Sometimes um, in jazz, you, if you're playing over a seventh chord, you might go raise that fourth. So you're playing like a Lydian scale and a Mixolydian at the same time. So you're doing what you did to the to major scale to create Mixolydian or Lydian and doing the Mixolydian. So you get this. Hey, Beppe, good to see you. Yeah, this is uh, Jerry Jones' electric sitar. I'm not using the sympathetic... Because they're not tuned. <laughs> it's just a mess. <laughs> Pretty much chaos there. But but uh, yeah, it's just tuned like a standard guitar. It's got the buzzy bridge. That's it's cool because it was invented by um, uh, an L.A. session guitar player in the 60s. So the history of this guitar only goes back to the 1960s. Um, so, Beppe, are you a jazz bass player? Is that correct? I saw your post. I think it looked like you played jazz. Do you, what do you consider the, if you do, what do you consider the bebop scale? Um, cause I just Googled it and they're kind of a couple different options. I'm not sure, but, uh, like I said, so you could, you can take that. Um, so yeah, the, so the fingering on, I'm not going to write that one down, but basically you just take on the mixolydian scale, you just take this fourth note and raise it up a half step. So you get uh root second, third sharp four, fifth, sixth, flat seven, you know, so you get, you've got the sharp four and the flat seven. So it's like kind of merging the mixolydian and the lydian together to create a new scale. And I love doing that. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bungle. I don't know if Peter Griffin were a guitarist, this is, this is what he would sound like. But I do. Thank you. 
done it on this. I should have played I should have played ETA on this. <laughs> uh, did you guys see the uh, uh, I don't know if you saw the movement um, video they did for ETA. It's pretty cool so you can check that out later. I'll make a millionth of a penny from that. Um, so the movement is uh, 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 Nick Nick DeRosa who's a gr really really good um, uh, choreographer. And he's he did a, a choreography for everybody for every um, Bieber uh, song on the record. Um, uh, the movement, and so th this kid did a really good. Um, can I can I get a link to share? No, I have to open it. Um, I don't want this to play though. Okay, so. All right. So here it is. Here's the link to, if you want to go check that out. Um, but that's the song that's on the new Bieber record that I wrote with Pooh Bear and him and everybody. Um, but the, the, the dancing on it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> you guys are going, you guys are going on a whole. Uh, okay, let's see. I have a Peter Vogel guitarist scale book and it says Bebop is whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, half, half. But yeah. So that's the Mixolydian. Wait. Um, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, half, half. Yeah. Yeah. So just basically mix a leading with a B in the middle. Yeah, that makes sense. I, you know, I didn't know what it was called. I use it all the time. Um, it's kind of one of those things where you just... You know, you, without even thinking about it, you go, it's almost like a horn section. Yeah, I mean, I, that, so that's just, uh, Tom, Jim has done a good question. What's, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. It's hard to keep track of this is good. How far up is it? It's pretty far up. Oh, Jim Davis. Corpus substitutions would be great to hear about. Yes, we talked about that, but I will totally hit on that again too. I don't know what video that was in. <laughs> but you can always do a minor sub or a major sub. And a minor sub is going down, taking a major chord and going down um, a, a half step and a whole step to the minor relative, the relative minor chord. Um, and also you can do the same if you have a song that's got a minor chord in it and you're, it's like a loop. Um, <laughs> my humility. No, I'm the greatest person that ever walked the face of the earth. What are you guys talking about? You, you know that that's why you watch me. Um, so, uh, so, and I, I like to I like to say go down a half step and a whole step so that you're staying in scale mode. Okay, so if we're in the key of G and we go down one fret and then down two frets, which is a whole step, so a half step would be F sharp and a whole step would be E minor. You can sub E minor for G if you want to. So if you got a song that's you're just you know at home playing your electric sitar. You 
know, I just right there to make it a little bit more interesting of a progression, I subbed E minor for the G. OK, that way it was like, OK, so I'm not going to go G, C, G, D for every chord every time. Um, and the same is true if you have a song that's. You could go. You can sub the other way. So if you're on a minor chord, go up one whole step and one half step and you're going to find it's relative major. Um, and the reason is the notes in a G chord. And we're going to get into this tomorrow, okay? We're going to start getting into this. So this so this will be some stuff that we'll be talking about tomorrow, okay? The chords, the notes in a G chord are G, B, D. The notes in an E minor chord are E, G, B. So you can see we have both have a G and a B. So that's why when they're that similar, there's only really one note difference between them. Um, you can sub them. And you could do the same thing. You could sub instead of E minor. You could technically sub like a C major 7 because you got... C, C major seven is basically an E minor triad with a C in the bass. So you could even do that. There's a lot of subs you can do that you can go, you can get extremely crazy. And, um, you know. You could you can sub all over the place. You can do a tritone sub. Uh, and that's another type of sub, sub. And we might talk about that at some point. It's not hard, but it's just... Um, um, it's it's just one uh, one to think about. It's probably one you might naturally do anyway. Believe it or not, tritone, um, especially in jazz, you would totally do, do a tritone sub. Um, let's see what, what else. Um, oh, and so yeah. So the other thing is, if you were to, if I were to look at the difference between a G major, so G major chord is G, B, D. I'm getting hungry too. E minor seven is E, G, B, D. So if you compare those two, I mean, E minor seven has a G chord in it. So you, you could totally substitute um, E minor seven for a G chord. So that's what chords, that's one thing. Chord subs is a whole Pandora's box. Um, and you got, you look at guys like Jacob Collier, who is amazing. Um, but to my taste, he will substitute things so far away from the original uh, that to me, it's almost unlistenable. I'm not a fan to the degree where I'm like, I, you know, I love watching his videos and I love to hear him explain things, but even like the way he can hear things and imagine things are way over my head. And then and it, they, his re-engineering of songs gets so far away from the original. It's like, you don't even hear the original anymore. And um, particularly pop music, you know, the, I understand, particularly as a pop music writer, that the chord progressions are complex. But what pop music is all about is production um, and also the connectivity of the vocalist with the audience. I mean, Bieber has this thing where he just knows exactly when to crack his voice. And that just brings the listener in. And I've always said, you know, when I because I've, I've spent a lot of time working with young singers through the years. Um, and working with developing young artists. And um, I've always said with singers, I want to be able to hear what kind of day they're having. I want their voice to emote the emotions, to be emotive. Uh, and and to I want to be able to, like, when they sing in that microphone, I want to go, you know, they're having a bad day. I can hear it in their voice, and that's emotion. Uh, or they're having a great day, and I can hear that in their voice, too. And, you know, and they kind of have to have that X factor. And that's kind of what, um, um, uh, shoot, uh, Scooter Braun noticed when he discovered Justin on YouTube. He was just looking for a song. And you know how when you look for a song, you see all these covers before sometimes even the real song comes up. And he saw this kid, and the kid had like millions of views. And he's like, yeah. And he was like, this is crazy. And it, it took him forever to find him. I mean, if you watch the first Bieber movie, you'll hear. So, oh, you're in the Netherlands. Well, we were, uh, wait, who's, let's see. So Dennis, we were just in. Uh, Beth and I went to Amsterdam not last year, but right before Christmas, about a year ago, and we I loved it. We loved Amsterdam, and the, the Van Gogh Museum was amazing, so emotional, great, um, and so was the. Uh, we went to obviously to the Anne Frank Museum. In fact, our hotel was right next to the Anne Frank Museum. Um, and we're at the Anne Frank house, um, actually. And that was phenomenally emotional. I mean, it was, 
it kind of pulls you in literally you're pulled into their space and you've got the headphones on and you're listening to the whole spiel and then they you know you go to the next station and it tells you the next thing and then you get to the end and you realize that they were captured just two weeks before the end of the war and it was like dang it that's just brutal very very hard but yeah it was I, we, I love the Christmas lights everywhere. Uh, the food was great. The people were awesome. Everything about Netherlands was really, really cool. We were in, uh, we stayed at um, the Torin Hotel, which I recommend. Um, if When, when, um, when uh, people start traveling again, it's a really cool old hotel. And uh, it was really centrally located right on the canals. Um, let's see. Okay, you're up in the northeast corner. Okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. I know exactly where you are. Um, let's see, Tom. So basically, you can take any two notes from a minor seven and treat it as an inverted two chord. Give me an example of that, Verdi. I'm not quite sure. The way you're thinking about it is a way that I would describe it. Oh, uh, oh, the Dolly Museum in St. Petersburg. I didn't realize it was a Dolly Museum. You know what? Other is a great museum in Pasadena is Norton Simon. If you're really into, uh, he's got a huge collection. I think the largest collection outside of Europe of Degas. So if you like Degas, Norton Simon in Pasadena. All these things are closed right now. It's crazy. Oh, your mom knew your mom knew Dolly. That's crazy. Um, so, Verdi, give me an example of what you're what you're thinking. Yeah, we used to be members of the Norton Simon. I think our cards just expired. Um, yeah, because we lived in Pasadena for thirty five years, and Huntington too, which is great if you like. Um, the Huntington Museum has a lot of like Gainsborough portraitures. Blue Boy is there. <laughs> The reason I laughed is because when I was a kid growing up, we had um, kind of a bathroom that was just a just a head, no sink or anything like. It was in the laundry room, just a just a head, and there was a lot a sink in the laundry room. But basically, it was just. And my mom put a, a poster of Blue Boy, a famous painting Blue Boy, up on the wall. And so, growing up, my whole life. There was Blue Boy sitting there while I take standing there while I took a pee, you know, in the in the uh, laundry room. And uh, so then I moved to Pasadena, and some friends say, "Hey, let's go to the Huntington, Huntington Museum." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." So we're going to the Huntington Museum, and it's this giant gardens and mansion, and they got the old furniture, and it's all like, you know, snapshot of how it was 200 years ago. Really cool, great, great um, grounds, and then um, they have art museum. And I go in there and there's a giant room and it's there's guards everywhere and it's you know these high ceilings and there's there's a blue boy and I'm looking at blue boy and going well that's crazy <laughs> yeah I peed in the laundry room well there was a bathroom in the laundry room you know what I mean it had a door <laughs> I know it sounds like I, it's, I knew that would sound weird but it was this it was where the bat where the like third bathroom in the house was so um oh a G6 chord. Yeah, let me talk about that in a second. Yeah, G6 is 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 uh minor 7 in in first first inver first inversion. E minor 7 in first inversion. Exactly right. Uh, I like that chord. I like I like that chord a lot. Um so I'm I'm looking at this blue boy painting and I'm I go up to one of the guards and I go, "Do they cuz it was huge. It was like giant painting and I'm like I said, "Do they always make reproductions so big?" And he's like, "Excuse me." I said, yeah, I mean, why is it so big? Is it bigger than the real one? And they go, "What are you talking about?" I'm going, "You know, this painting, the Blue Boy. Is it? Is it like, why did? Why is it so big? I mean, what? Why did they make it bigger than the real one?" And they go, "That is the real one." I went, "Wait, what?" And I went from Indianapolis, where you know I saw this every day, and then I go to this town where I think it's a pretty small town, Pasadena. A little old lady from Pasadena. I go to the museum there, and they happen to have the painting that I've been I've known since I was a child, and it's right there, and I'm like. And the guard goes, why do you think there are so many guards here? <laughs> and I went, you mean that's the real painting? I did, had no idea. It just, it just, uh, I was, yes, yes. 
<laughs> so I actually bought the painting. It's in our bathroom. I'll have to take a camera over there. It's right over the toilet. It's the only way I can go to the bathroom. That and then run water. <laughs> Every time I go to the Huntington Museum, I have to peek. But that's pretty much true of any museum I go to. So, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. Um, see, I've been playing the sitar the whole time. So this is a Jerry Jones electric sitar. If you're wondering, um, it's was invented. I can't remember the guitar player's name, but he was kind of a member of the Wrecking Crew. Uh, but a guitar player in the '60s in um, LA, and it's basically a weird bridge that creates the buzzy sound. You know. Oh, let's see. Uh, what was the song we did? <laughs> Um, you know, it was used a lot on hits in the 60s and 70s. And I picked this up a few years ago, did a review of it. Um, it's the, They don't make them anymore. I don't think Jerry Jones is even around anymore. I'm glad I picked it up when I did. Rogue, I think, makes this. They make two versions, one with just this part and then one with both these parts like this. It looks pretty much like this. It's, it's just plastic, um, maple neck, but made in the USA. It's very, very solidly built. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't use it very often. I took it out just because I thought it would be fun to have something different today. <laughs> so, uh, actually, on Sgt. Pepper's, that's a real sitar. So, and in fact, people give me grief on my review of this that um, I got to take a drink because I touched my face. That's the game we're playing. If I touch my face, you have to take a drink. It's the drinking game. That's the rule. Um, so yeah, on on I don't think they use electric electric sitar on the Be any Beatles records. That was actual real sitar. It's probably the reason the guy invented this because I think it goes back to 1968, and that would have been the year after Sgt. Pepper's came out, or yeah, 67 was Par Pepper, um, and uh, so I think it was kind of an effort to emulate that sound without having to buy and learn a, learn sitar, which is not easy to play. Um, and it takes up, it's a, sitars are pretty big. I, I wouldn't want to get one because I don't have that much space here. So ran out of bourbon already. Jim, where do you live? Are you in uh, Louisville? I go to Louisville and I always, we go to bourbon bars in Louisville because I, I go there every year. Hopefully we'll do it this year. Gosh, it's in September. I hope end of September. Uh, every year I go to play guitar for the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Awards, which is always a lot of fun. And they take very good care of me and they won't let me take my wallet out of my pocket. And they take us around and Take us to really good restaurants and okay, Charlotte. Yeah, that's not too far from there. It's bourbon country, though, isn't it? Uh, but they they make no bones of saying if it's not from Kentucky, it's not bourbon. <laughs> so uh, whenever I need bourbon, I always make sure it says Kentucky on the label. So, um, but uh, uh, that doesn't happen very often because I'm not a big fan. Um, it burns like <laughs> it burns like the Dickens going down. Uh, but if you're cold, it works great. So. Uh, let's see. Am I missing some stuff here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, you know, well, when Dennis, when we were in Amsterdam or in Amsterdam, we also went to um, Harlem, which um, where we went to the um, uh, shoot the museum there. Uh, shoot, I can't think of her name, but she had she had Jews during World War II and went to an, a prison camp. Um, I can't think of her name now. You know who I'm talking about. And then we also went to the um, the Hague, which was, they're all cities. And we spent a day at the Hague with some friends that are from there. And they're both attorneys with the government. So we did that. Um, let's see. Yeah, Squire. Yes. ET, yeah, I, I think I used Squire also on uh, Always, which was another song that um, didn't make the record, but it got... It, it, I got some money from it because they used it in the documentary. So, um, so hopefully, hopefully, it get released eventually. Um, your brain got tired, <laughs> and as you're deleting your own comments, there, Kathy. Uh, let's see, Charlotte. Uh, let's see, peanut butter ran out of liquid. Uh, yeah, drinking peanut butter that'll that'll uh, help. Let's see. Um, oh, and you're chilling out in the UK, yeah. Um, and the weather was nice today. I think it's about seventy today. Uh, 
Um, Kentucky does actually have a very, in fact, when I was flying to Kentucky a couple of years ago, I sat next to a British gentleman who, uh, was a movie director, a uh, movie producer and director. He had done the BBC versions of the Narnia movies and he was working on a, he did a documentary on, uh, opiate, opiate, opium addiction, opiate addiction and went, um, so I talked to everybody and I I'm sitting, we're talking and having a great conversation on the plane. And he's showing me scenes from his movie because he actually has it on his iPad. Almost completely edited at that time. And he was flying back to Kentucky because one of his, the people that were in the movie that was, that had gotten um, help had backslid and was back in jail. So he was going there to help him out. Uh, really super, super nice guy. Uh, his wife's actually a newscaster, I think, for the BBC. And so if you look up the Narnia, not the big Narnia version, but the Narnia version that was done by BBC kind of in the 80s, he was the director of that. And he, I'll have to check and see, we exchanged numbers and everything, and we've, we've talked a couple times, but I'll have to check and see if he ever um, released that movie. Because it was really interesting because there was this device that was invented that allowed people to get off of opium um, and heroin with, without going through withdrawals. And it was like this battery pack or something. He starts describing this thing you know, on the plane. I'm flying with him. We're flying Chicago to Louisville, I think. And he's describing this thing. And I went, wait a minute. I read a biography about Keith Richards. And they talked about in the 70s going to this Caribbean island. All the rock stars would go there. They would literally spend two weeks on this gorgeous Caribbean island hooked up to these battery packs. And they would get off of heroin without going through withdrawals, without having any of the cravings. And he said, yeah, that's the lady that created this thing. She was like a, a British lady or something. They would never approve it for some reason. It was like the whole movie was a, kind of about the fact that, you know, the, the carnage of this problem, which has gotten a little bit better in the last couple of years, uh, but the problem, and then the fact that there's a cure, but nobody will acknowledge it or something. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay away from both of those, David. <laughs> so um, let's see. Who uh, 38? Are you talking about how many people have dime for every time I run into a British director? I have zero dimes. <laughs> um, let's see. How many people logged in today? Well, right now, 38, like, like uh, uh, Bruce, I mean, not Bruce, Michelle said. Uh, we'll see when I log off, it'll tell me the peak. But I haven't seen it hit 40 yet, but it could. I'm, it's just not very exciting right now. I don't. People logging in are going, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, but if I play the sitar, they'll probably um, stay on. I toyed with going, getting, do, opening the channel again tonight and doing like classical guitar for an hour, just sitting here playing so that you guys can have dinner and I'll accompany your dinner. <laughs> and I put a tip jar out. Yeah, I'm losing all the yeah, I'm losing a lot of people with this shirt. Yes, I play at Shepherd. Yes, you're right. Yeah, that machine, it was crazy. So here's what's crazy about the book, though. I'm reading this book uh, about Keith Richards and... 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm actually done. I finished it. But um, <laughs> the reason they did that, okay, the reason they did that, they went to this island for two weeks, and I'm sure it cost a fortune, but they did, it didn't. It wasn't. A, it didn't really matter um, because they. Uh, <laughs> And I, I heard another story too, but they they uh, would do it to get off heroin so they could go back to the states and do it again. They would do heroin again because the only apparently, according to the book, it said the only time you really experience the true high on heroin is the first time you do it. The rest of the time, it's just to try not to feel like you're dying of the flu, which is crazy. Yeah, Pepper, so so sorry to hear about your brother. That's just awful. It's just awful. It's so it's such a hard thing. It's such, you know, they literally, they call it a monkey on your back. It's such a horrible thing. I, I, I can't even imagine, um, you know, but um, David, see you later. Be careful going out there. You're in New York City, so be careful going out. Wear your, wear your mask. We ordered masks. If you're having a hard time finding masks, I'll give you a secret. Um, my, In fact, it was a friend of mine who's an ER doctor in Pasadena. He texted me yesterday, said, how are you doing? I'm like, how am I doing? How are you doing? He was like, what are you texting me for? And I said, we're doing great. Uh, I said, how are you doing? And he said, he's doing good. And he said, oh, by the way, um, uh, he said, um, if you're looking for face masks, you can find them on Etsy. So go to Etsy because all those crafty people that know how to sew things and make things, they're making face masks. So now they're not the... I ordered two and they're not, um, they're not uh, the N95 grade. They're not for working with people that are sick, but they're good for going to the grocery store because we're going to come up to a point where they've already, CDC's already changed their their thing about, they think everyone should wear them now, which is hilarious because just a little while ago, they said, no, don't wear them, save them for the workers. But again, you because you could be carrying this and not know it, uh, you could be asymptomatic and not, you could have it for two weeks and not even know. Um, you could be at the early stages before you have symptoms and be spreading it all over the place, whether touching things or whatever. I mean, we're really cautious now about touching things. I think we need to institute a rule at the grocery store. If you touch it, you buy it. None of this like, eh, I don't want that. And putting it back on the shelf. That's got to go away. Uh, you know, go backs. If you ever worked in a grocery store, you know what go backs are. Uh, that should need that go backs need to be a thing of the past. Um, and then, uh, so I ordered two um, masks for Beth and I uh, from Etsy. And you could, the great thing is you can choose your color and all that stuff. We got like blue ones instead of dark, you know, boring, you know, black ones or, or kind of scary dark black ones. Um, but the, got blue ones. And then they also have a pocket. So you can, if you want to, you could slip in some better protection if you wanted to get some. Uh, I hear, is it HEPA filters or whatever that uh, people are using those. There's also vacuum cleaner bags that have HEPA filters in them. You can use those as well if you want to cut back. Um, yeah, Rick, you're you're smart. And I know a lot of people in California, they're calling anybody who's retired to come back if they can and, and do some kind of uh, doctor work. Um, we'll see. California has been spared so far. I mean, gosh, we're our, our death count, our, our case count is lower. Um, I think, I mean, can, New Jersey is second. New York is the worst. Uh, California is still third, but it's just because we have 40 million people here. We're the most populated state. But we still are only around 10,000, 11,000 cases. And uh, in the deaths, I think we're not even 250, which is really crazy. Um, uh, um, but um, the um, – the, uh, so the – sorry, the um, – so, uh, so I bought these masks and we're going to get them soon, but Etsy is a great place to go get masks if you want. So, uh, let's see, a friend of mine is making masks. Oh, so you, you have to hold me the, well, okay. I understand. Well, you could also have like a paper towel you could pick it up with and then put it down, you know, something like that just for your neighbors and stuff. Um, and a lot of times too, you can look that stuff up before you go to the store so you know which things you can avoid. Uh, I have no allergies, so. Um, oh, interesting. So you're doing that too, Kimberly. You're cutting up the bags. I, we haven't done that. Um, uh, let's see. Um, my open mic host got it. He's doing okay. Oh, that's crazy. So uh, that means he was sharing a microphone. So anyone else who got on that microphone needs to be careful. That's another thing. <laughs> when we were doing services at churches, they were sterilizing the mics and everything. I mean, we were having to stand six feet apart from each other. So yeah, see California dropped down. I think Michigan passed us. So yeah, some about, I think the weather helps. The warm weather definitely helps. Uh, it makes you, uh, and the other thing is 
we were really hard. Someone said that this may be a reason they're trying to figure it out. Um, but they, there's, we were really, really hard hit in the, by the regular flu in December and November of last year. California had way more cases than anybody else. And so that was, they think that there might have been some immunity, immunity built up. Um, so that's crazy. We think my son had it where they just today approved, or the FDA approved um, the antibody test. So I'm anxious for those to start to be common because uh, I think I may have already had it too. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, California cities are very spread out, especially compared to New York. Uh, here's the other thing about LA and New York. On a, on a normal basis, 8 million people use public transportation in New York and only 1 million people in California use public transportation. So um, in Los Angeles, I mean, Los Angeles, about 1 million people use public transportation. New York City, 8 million. And the case number difference is about eight to one between Los Angeles and New York City. So that was also very potentially a factor. And especially the fact that we we closed early. Uh, San Francisco, uh, actually Santa Cruz County was the first to institute stuff. Then San Francisco, the, the counties around San Francisco, and then Orange County, and then almost like within minutes, the whole state shut down. So we were the first as a state to shut down. Um, yeah, I agree. We got to support the local places too. We we just uh, took in a bunch of food. We went shopping and got a bunch of stuff because we don't know if some order is going to come down the pike at some point where it's, they say, you know, no one leave the house for anything for two weeks. That could happen. Um, uh, yeah, New York, the, they were kind of delayed on everything. So interesting, I, I, Korean. I, I, Korean, yeah, the the flu season vaccine wasn't good enough. That's true. A lot of people got the flu and they had the the vaccine. You're right. Um, let's see, Gary, what did you say? Oh, you're going to Friday Fish? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I, I've got I've got a couple of really good places around here. We got a really good fish taco place I really like, and we've been supporting them. And they said that their business has pretty much not dropped off much. The takeout business has been about as good. Um, and the wait staff is just the people that, you know, own it. So it's not like they had to fire anybody. And then um, the same thing with the ramen place. The ramen place didn't have any seating anyway. So you almost always had to get 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 it to go. So, okay. So we gone two hours. I knew I would do this. I hope I'm, I hope I don't get like exhausted today. Um, wow, that's crazy. Okay, a folding oak. Oh, so that's kind of the Dennis. That's that's interesting, um, because they need they need processing power power to 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 computate. So people are making their computers available to uh, IT departments or whatever you're saying to to. That's really cool. Um, uh, they that's kind of like um, blockchain almost in a way, isn't it? Um, I always said the the I'm not a big fan of um, uh, crypt crypto cr cryptic cryptocurrency, but I do feel like the, the product that's going to come out of cryptocurrency is going to be the blockchain. That's going to be that. And it always proven to be a big, um, uh, a big deal, kind of the new thing. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm going to shut off, shut off. And I'll leave the live chat up for a minute so we can all say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Sorry, this is so long. Oh my gosh. I apologize, but uh, just get kind of get going. Uh, tomorrow we're going to start chord theory. So uh get your pieces of paper and pads out, but I think you're going to, I think you're going to like this a lot. We're going to have a lot of fun with this and um, I'll decide tomorrow if I'm going to do it in the key of C. I might do it in a different key. So we're not doing everything in C, uh, but it sure is easy to see in C. So I'm probably going to, because of the piano kind of stuff, I'll probably stick to C. Okay. So you guys take care of yourselves, stay inside um, and we'll talk soon.